you are welcome to LFN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring our Kelly, real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. James Peter Diragatis, who was born on September 2, 1964, is an American music critic and co-host of Sound Opinions. Diragatis has written several articles for media houses and magazines such as Rolling Stone, Spin, Guitar World, and Modern Drummer. For 15 years, Jim Diragatis was the pop music critic here in Chicago for the Chicago Sun-Times. After rejecting his Catholic religion during his freshman year of high school, Diragatis became an atheist. Jim Diragatis later joined Columbia College Chicago's English department in 2010 as a lecturer and is currently an associate professor of instruction teaching music and media in Chicago reviewing the arts, cultural criticism, and the arts including journalism as literature. Diragatis hosts Sound Opinions with fellow music critic Greg Cott. The radio talk show is heard here on Chicago Public Radio and nationally syndicated by American Public Media and is available as a podcast. The program is one of the longest-running talk radio shows focusing exclusively on rock music. Diragatis and Abdan Palash reported for the Chicago Sun-Times in December 2000 that court records and interviews alleged that the celebrity R&B musician R. Kelly had used his position of fame and influence to meet and indulge with underage girls. Diragatis and Palash reported in February 2002 that a videotape had surfaced allegedly featuring R. Kelly engaging with a 14-year-old girl. As a Sun-Times music critic, Diragatis alleged that he had received the videotape and subsequently turned it over to police. Diragatis was named as a witness in R. Kelly's 2000 trial where the defense lawyers charged that he should be charged with CP for allegedly making a copy of the tape and showing it to another person after turning the claimed original over to police. After initially failing to appear for the trial, Diragatis was on May 30, 2008 ordered by Judge Vincent Gauhan to report to the trial the following day. However, upon questioning by Judge Gauhan outside of the presence of the jury, Diragatis surprisingly refused to provide substantive answers, citing his First and Fifth Amendment rights as the basis for his refusal. Judge Gauhan disagreed that as a journalist Diragatis had a First Amendment basis for refusing to testify but excused Diragatis from taking the stand in front of the jury based upon his Fifth Amendment right not to incriminate himself. We can also recall that on July 17, 2017, Diragatis reported that R. Kelly had been accused by three sets of parents of holding their daughters in an alleged abusive cult. Subsequently, because of frustration R. Kelly released a song discussing the allegations against him and criticizing Diragatis in 2018 entitled I Admit. Now, for sure everything that Jim Diragatis claimed to have investigated over years is still found quite very difficult to comprehend, given the fact that several of his accounts either differ or don't correlate, though he has expressly insisted that he was the first man who received the alleged R. Kelly tape. In several of his accounts including in his tarnishing book against R. Kelly named Solace, Jim acknowledges the fact that the said R. Kelly tape was circulating all around. This prompts one to query his argument that he was indeed the first man to receive the tape and break it out to the public. Jim has claimed to have received at least two tapes, one in 2001 and then the other in 2002, both allegedly depicting R. Kelly abusing and being involved with underage girls. The fact remains that only the second tape became a centerpiece of R. Kelly's 2008 trial. Can we honestly think that Diragatis received a tape depicting R. Kelly in abuse of a minor and did nothing? not even reporting the matter to the police or even blowing the whistle he so much longed to. Why then did he do exactly that in record time of four hours to the 2002 tape? Jim today talks of multiple tapes being received at his residence and has completely run away from the word tape to the word tapes in his recent narratives. We can also recall the fact that Jim claimed to have reached out to Sparkles in the year 2001 who insisted she did not have or want a conversation with him concerning R. Kelly's allegations, but Jim accounts that a year later in 2001, Sparkles reached out to him because she had been hearing about the videotape. Jim continues to narrate as having told Sparkles he could do nothing without the tape and then all of a sudden, a tape appears in his mailbox. This just keeps gaining shape as a witch hunt against R. Kelly and Jim was trying to do everything in his power as a music critic to bring him down. We 
should also remember that Jim DeRogatis had all along wanted employment from R. Kelly with no success. We still can't rule out the thoughts that Jim's actions are an extrapolation of the feelings of rejection resulting from his failure to join the R. Kelly team. It is indeed true that Jim DeRogatis is an associate professor of instruction with the Department of English, a writing columnist at College Chicago, and together with Greg co-hosts Sound Opinions which is the world's role in rock talk show. He is now here investigating the R&B world claiming it is an independent investigation and production he is interested in. Imagine him compiling 20 years of his work in investigative journalism into a book concerning the R&B world instead of rolling and rocking. Jim has gone to the extent of linking R. Kelly's You Are Not Alone song that he wrote for Michael Jackson to the late Aaliyah yet that message was meant for him and Jackson. It is like everything that R. Kelly did was taken and flipped over by Jim to try and make it fit his obsession. We truly know that Dream Hampton made an error probably intentionally in using Jim's writings as a basis for the controversial surviving R. Kelly docuseries. Jim brags that the mute R. Kelly organizers congratulated him about his work, they would otherwise have met a dead end if it was not because of his compilations, they acknowledged. It is not rocket science for one to note that Jim's book Sola started all the unnecessary mess for R. Kelly and needs to be investigated. I don't know if Jennifer Bonjean can help us here. We are most likely delaying another lawsuit. Jim Deerogatis otherwise deserves a RICO charge for teaming up with women and men in the Me Too and Mute R. Kelly movements. He did put up criminal organizations whose aim was to bring down R. Kelly. Journalists should be unbiased. You can't report on other artists differently by having a pass for some and not the other yet they did the same thing, and you claim it is because they don't have as many accusers as R. Kelly. It is interesting to hear Jim say that he got the facts and then threw the tape in the trash pile because he thought that it was a hater who had fabricated it. It also remains strange as to why the alleged girl on the tape, who was the star witness was not subpoenaed because they felt she had been victimized enough to subpoena her, or force her and the parents to do so. We however hopefully think that the Supreme Court will be able to see things differently because it has a history of true legal independence and is not susceptible to influence peddling. There is too much evidence that Judge Donnelly did not allow the jury to see or hear. Jim endeavored to attack whoever tried to bring out the truth about R. Kelly's situation. Deerogatis makes unfortunate statements that Susan Loggins served as part of the machine that didn't take R. Kelly's allegations seriously as criminal acts. Nonetheless, Jim or no Jim, all we pray for now is for the Supreme Court of this great nation to look at things in a non-prejudiced way using the independence it enjoys and grant R. Kelly his long-deserved freedom. Thank you for watching today's video, a production of LFN Media, giving you another perspective of issues at hand. We make it our business to keep you updated with the truth amidst the cloud of lies the media wants you to believe. It is therefore important to subscribe to this channel, Hit the bell icon and allow all notifications so that you don't miss out whenever we publish a new video.